So I'm going to talk about hydrostatic pressure versus osmotic pressure. And hydrostatic pressure, um, I was looking it up online, and hydro can be like a water and static being uh, something that's standing still, like the water that's pushing on the boat from the outside. That was one example I saw. So um, hydrostatic pressure is the pressure of the blood that's being pushed in against the capillary walls. And it's being caused because as your heart is beating and squeezing, so you, you get this blood pressure, um, it's squeezing and it's pushing blood through the arteries and then through the arterioles here, and then it's going into the little uh, capillaries on the arterial side. And it's like being pumped and forced through. So you have this like force and this pressure. And what happens when you get this pressure as it's coming in this way is of course the red blood cells they're too big and they cannot fit through these walls here these capillary walls but the water inside the blood the plasma um, it can fit through and so it will leave and it won't take all of its proteins its larger proteins that can't fit but it, it will take some good stuff so it's gonna leave and I'm gonna just draw so it's not to scale, but just to get an idea, it's going to leave with some good stuff like uh, glucose and some hormones. And these are things that the cells need. So it's going to splash across all the cells like that. And the cells are going to be like, yay, we're getting all this good stuff. So that pressure is going to force it out, force it out. And then when it gets to the middle here, um, right about there, it, the hydrostatic pressure drops, it gets really low because that pumping from the heart, it's kind of far away now and it's dying out like a wave at the ocean. Once it gets to the shore, it gets really weak. And so that's pretty much what's happening. That pumping, that hydrostatic pressure is getting really low. And now, um, since that's really low, we have osmotic pressure that has not changed. So hydrostatic pressure can be stronger and weaker Osmotic pressure stays the same. However, um, it can only do its thing when hydrostatic pressure is low enough. So now that the hydrostatic pressure is low enough, let's say about right here, uh, the osmotic pressure can do its thing. So we have the water out here and it's doing what water does and it's saying, you know, I wanna go to a place where there's more solutes where there's less water, and that place is back inside the capillaries. And the fact that uh, the capillary and the solutes in it is kind of like pooling and drawing, causing a pressure of water to come inside, that is called osmotic pressure. So the good thing about that is the cells, as the water's going back in, the cells are like, hey, would you mind taking some of our trash and throwing it out? And the water is like, sure. So it takes with it some CO2 as it leaves. And that's good because as it continues on its way, it'll leave uh, through the venules, back through the veins, back to the heart, to the lungs. And then as you breathe, the CO2 will be released. So it's a really good thing. Hydrostatic pressure causes all the good stuff to get taken and feeding the cells and the osmotic pressure draws the water back in so that some of the trash can be taken out. And then any water that's left over, because there's always a little bit, um, will get taken back up into the lymph vessel. And the fluid, now that it's in the lymph vessel, will have a new name. It'll be called lymph fluid. And that has some really cool processes as well.